ok. So, so an extensive form is a tree with a specific vertex indicating this starting node at the starting point of the game. You have a cost for each player at each leaf node. leaf node or also called terminal node. A partition of the nodes of the tree into player sets. So, so you partition the nodes of the tree into player sets. So, so really, not all nodes. Ex so I should be uh, more precise here. All nodes except for except the leaf node, except terminal nodes. These are partitioned into what are called player sets. A partition. of the player sets into information sets. Okay. So, into information sets, the information sets have uh, some requirements such that this same number of branches emanate from each node in the same information set. Okay. Now, there is an additional condition which is also often put you will find this in some books. So, let me put that here as a with a star. The additional condition is that no node is a descendant of another node. in the same information set. So, I will come to why the all I uh, will explain all of these things now ok. So, so an extensive form is defined in this way. So, you have a tree you take a particular node of the tree and that becomes your starting node ok. So, the game starts from that uh, that node. The, the nodes of, uh, of the tree, uh, the leaf nodes are where you list out the payoffs. So, what the game ends when you reach a leaf node ok. After that the, at, at the leaf node nobody plays, it is just a sort of a placeholder for you to know that the game has ended. It is your term what we call terminal state and control and so on. So, ok. So, it is the game ends there and that is and you get your payoffs ok. The, there is a payoff the pay uh, there is uh, a tuple of payoffs listed for all the players at each leaf node. Okay. The, the other nodes of the tree are partitioned 
into what are called player sets. Player sets tell a player when it is his turn to play. Okay. So, uh, when, so when a, a particular node belongs to player 1's player set, it means that when the game comes to that node, it is player 1's turn to play. Okay. So, all the nodes have some or the other, it is a partition, so which means all the nodes have some or the other player, every node has some or the other player assigned to it as, a, as the player whose turn it is to play. And it again it is a partition which means it, there is no conflict, there cannot be two players whose turn it is to play at that at the same node. Okay. So, so this, so at every node there is a player whose turn it is to play, exactly one player whose turn it is to play. Now, the player set of a particular player is a collection of nodes. This further is subdivided or partitioned into what we call information sets. And the understanding is that if, if several no, if one or more nodes are in the same information set, then the player cannot distinguish between the nodes in that information set. Is this clear? So, if you go back here, let us take this, this structure, the, 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 the no, this is your extensive form. The player sets are like this. This is the player set for player 1, just this node, single node. The player set for player 2 are these 3 nodes, this one, this one and this one. These have been further partitioned into 2 information sets. There is one information set here, this bubble and there is another information set, trivial one here, which is this. Clear? So, and the understanding is as I said, player cannot distinguish between any two nodes that are in the same information set. So, these two nodes for player 2 are in the same information set. So, then for him, they are, these two nodes are actually the same. He has no way of distinguishing what, uh, what between the two nodes. The extensive form also has this additional constraint that you cannot just arbitrarily subdivide nodes and create information sets. You can decide who play, plays where more or less arbitrarily, okay. But you cannot subdivide player sets arbitrarily and create information sets. And the reason for that is that there is this constraint that the same number of branches must come out of each node in the same information set, okay. So, here these two nodes, okay have the same number of branches coming out of them. Okay. So, the, the, uh, these two nodes can be put in the same information set. If, if imagine there was another strategy here, let us say, uh, sorry, another action here for player, player 2, then these two could not have been in the same information set, that is not allowed. So, why not? So, yeah, so, there, so this is then the next natural question. So, why is it that, why is this requirement there? Exactly. So, a player, so this is basically co coming out of the very consequence, out of the fact that player, a player knows what actions are available to him. So, if there are more actions available here than there are here, then he could, could have distinguished between these two nodes. Then it does not make sense to say that they are in the same information set. You are basically contradicting yourself. You are saying that he cannot distinguish between these two, but he can play a there is a distinct different other action which he can play at the other node, right. So, what this means is the his actions are also a function of his information. The actions which means the actions available to him are a function of his information, okay. So, if he has the same information, then it necessarily means that he has the same set of available actions. Right? If there is another action at an, uh, available in some other scenario, then that means there is some reason for him to know, distinguish between that scenario and this scenario. So, if I, yeah. if I add a phantom node over there hmm. to match the number of uh, these nodes, the game would not make sense. Which, where would you add the phantom node? Let's say you had L2, M2, R2 on in, out here. here. So, add an M2 and give it one of those first. One of these. Yeah. And uh, there are just two on the left node, L1 node. Yeah. What if I add an M2 on that L1 node? 
yeah Yeah, so then it could not have been the same. The, yeah, yeah, because there would be a different set of strategies. That's fine, but uh, would its resolution match the? It would. It would match. That could happen. That's a different problem. But so this is then that is poor, poor. We are not saying that two games are are equivalent if their answers match. That is not the claim, right? So see, the it would you could have added another phantom action here, for example, but then it would be a different game. And in some cases, it now here, of course, this is zero sum. Probably it won't matter, but if it is non-zero sum, it could create problems. Point is, you have to have you need to respect the physics of the of the situation here. That time is flowing in this particular direction, right? It, as we start from the root node down towards the leaf node. The the extensive form game keeps track of the exact history of actions that have taken place. Players may not know which node they are on, but when they take an action, it gets registered in the ex extensive form, right? That so player one plays M one, but player two doesn't know whether it's M one that has been played or L one. Then player two plays say L two. The game reaches this node. This is the exact history that has happened, and player two. could not the very fact that player 2 could not have distinguished between these two has to be reflected in the fact that he has the same set of actions now here actually this requirement is stated in a very mild way it is saying that you know the same number of branches really what you actually are asking for is the same action set exact same action set you know technically you are not even shouldn't you, the, the the actions i have not given labels to the edges here for example what the what the labels are like l2 m2 r2 and so on that is i have ignored that part because i just want you to focus on the structure but the point is that even if there was some label that was different even he had the two sa same two actions uh, same number of actions but two but their names were different right so he could have had the action to go up and down in one node and left and right in another node but physically left and right means different something different from right up and down then these are two different two different actions okay so the point is the player should have no reason to distinguish between these so there should, the information should be exactly the same okay so that and we have to you know whatever are the ways by which he could have snooped in and figured out something about where he is all of that has to be already factored in and there should be no other ways for him to know any uh, any you know about where he is after this is this clear now this additional condition last condition here is a more complicated condition here what is happening is let me i'll just tell you this briefly so here what it is disallowing is this suppose there is a node here say let's say player player 2 has to play here at this some node some it's part of some larger tree and then there is another node which is player 2's which is also player 2's node and these two nodes are in the same information set okay so now what this means is player 2 has taken okay and play this node the second one the one below follows from the one above means there is a sequence of actions after which this node is arising okay let's take for simplicity that it comes out of the immediate action it follows from the immediate act so player 2 takes some action and then he gets to a next node okay let's call this node x let's call this node y he takes an action at node x it goes the game goes to node y but we are saying that node x and node y are in the same information set of player 2 now what is the meaning of this so it it means that he is not even aware if his his act, he has taken an action for him it is the game he has taken an action the game has moved okay the game is physically now at a different node okay the his game of the history of the game has evolved but he is not aware that he has in fact taken an action now this you can allow or disallow this is this condition is a form of absent mindedness you have you have done something but you don't remember that you have done it okay now whether you allow absent mindedness or not depends on the proportion of absent minded people in the world okay so in game theory is rather large so we can allow this 
so uh, so uh, so we this is this is not i i am not fully in favor of this, uh, of removing this this is, is only a, is kind of a technical thing um, whether you want to allow for a player to so when a player takes an action is he actually aware that his action has in fact been taken so this I, i'll i'll give you an example for instance so a place where this is this is not just i mean i'm giving it it's a form of absent mindedness because i would like to give personalities to the player but you don't have to think of it that way think of it like you are in some you are in in a spaceship in outer space you take an action okay it's supposed to spin you in one particular direction or turn turn you in some direction the world around you looks exactly the same you have no way of knowing whether you when after you press the button whether your spaceship moved or not did not move it is, you will try to press it again right it is that sort of a situation essentially there is no way for you to know whether the action that you supposedly took has in fact been taken okay so uh, so the game uh, next time you maybe you press the button you you know the, then the you know the spaceship will actually show you some uh, your new planet or whatever and you will know that ah okay it had worked so you have no way of knowing whether the button was not working or the you know or you had not taken the action or whatever you know or or, or the action so whatever the action was not taken or the action was taken and yet you uh, uh, the world looks the same so this is this leads to all sorts of you know so almost nearly paradoxical type of uh, situations so people tend to avoid it it's uh, it also leads to interesting questions so one can you know for their own sake you can you can include it so this is this is more of a uh, like a let's say an optional condition as far as whether we allow this in the model or not yeah not necessary no 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 the reason is because again information you can very well have situations where it's a this is player one, let's say player one's no, turn to play after which so player one plays and then again it is player one's turn to play and you have these two in the same information set player 1 has played then two different he could have played say left or right and the game reaches one of these two if he plays l he gets to this node if he plays r he gets to this node okay Play, now what does this model tell me ha huh. so he has played l or r okay whatever let's say he plays l the game comes here he play or he plays r and the game comes here but when he comes to this one of these two nodes he doesn't know whether it was the, whether he is got here due to his because he played l or because he he got here because he is played r he is was basically forgotten what he played he does know that he has played he remembers that he has played that's different from this here he doesn't even remember if he has in fact played is this clear but he here he remembers that he has played but he do, he doesn't uh, remember what he had played right so that means he has not between these two nodes and so it's fine so so your question was is it can you necessarily combine these two the answer is no you there is a there is a genuine loss of information here you can change the actions based on the same data again you'll have to do it prove it properly so you cannot this there is a loss of information the loss of information is uh, means that you cannot combine these two nodes collapse them into one because no so it matters for example the, the what you would so a player a player that plays l or r but cannot record whether he has played l or r and later has to then take an action is different from a player who has to play l and r and directly come to this these are very two different situations see essentially when uh, loss of information means it's essentially something is not being recorded in memory right your chip doesn't have that memory or your brain doesn't have that memory whatever something is not being recorded as an event which has actually happened and i, I mean then 
to say that 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 can in fact be collapsed to a situation to a case where he had that information is that's can you not true. An example where no collapse would work. No collapse would work means. I mean, I cannot come up with an equivalent action state which is larger such that. I so yeah, there are there are you can in fact there are the, not only that the set of equilibria itself changes when you allow for information uh, where you are uh, with memory and without memory the set of strategies itself is changes and that leads to a, a different set of equilibria so if a player is node is following his own action right so player one's no, next node is following from his own action we cannot it's not necessary that you can combine these two into one sort of uh, collapse them into one action okay so the essentially the game where you take two consecutive actions but you forget that at the second instance you forget what you had played first is different from the game where you take uh, uh, one action collectively for as as if you know at the as a collective action for the last step itself hmm hmm Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of course. He doesn't remember it, could, but it could matter. <laughs> no, no, yeah, it could, it could. It's exactly, that's the point. It could matter. So, I mean, so, uh, so this kind of these sort of things of loss of memory and so on are actually very, very important. I mean, uh, so if you uh, if you go and watch some of my lectures in uh, on uh, stochastic control problems, right? This is essentially the, the exact same thing that happens where you have a player taking sequence of actions, but then there is a limited amount of memory from, from one step to the next step and or there is noisy memory, you know there is memory but with corrupted with noise, it qualitatively changes the problem. Yeah, 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 we will we'll do this and much more many more exotic ones, um, okay. So can you tell me what are the? How do I express a simultaneous move game as an extensive form? Hmm. So, what is a simultaneous move? How would I characterize a simultaneous move game as an extensive form game? Which partition? all of player 2's nodes should be in the same information. So, in short, each player has only exactly one information set. Each player has exactly one information set. This is a simultaneous move game. Why is this a simultaneous move game? Because if 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 at least one player has more than one information set, then that that means that there is some situation in which that player has two pieces of there are two different two situations in which the that player has two different pieces of information. If he has if there is only one information set, which means regardless of what has happened, he he has he really has just one information. Right? So, then if that is a simultaneous move game. So, each player has exactly one information set. So, our information set is equal to player set. Okay? So, that means at all the nodes that he is playing, he, is, he has the same information and this is true for every player. Okay? All right. So, the ex other extreme is the game of perfect information. So, what is the game of perfect information in which a game of perfect information is one where player knows exactly what which node he is at. Then what would that be? Each information set is a singleton, right. So, there cannot there is no information set with more than one node in it. So, each information set
So, there are as many information sets as there are number of nodes in the player set. Okay. So, this is the other extreme which is called the case of perfect information. Okay. Usually all the other games that we had which are uh, so this one for this game for example is a game of I said imperfect information and it is also not a uh, clearly not a simultaneous move game and it is imperfect information because some this second pl second player does not did not have access to uh, this whether the first player whether he was at this node or this node. Now, the, what are the strategies of a player? So, let us write this the set of strategies strategies of player i. This is the set of strategies of player i. These are so let us write let us say i i the set of information sets. of player i ok. So, a strategy is going to be a mapping from an information set to the actions in that information set. So, let us write um, let us write let us say u i subscript eta i be the set of actions to player i add information set eta i in in i and let us write capital U i as simply the union over eta i in i i of U i. So, this is set of all all actions of player i. So, then what is the set of strategies of player i? Can we write express this in terms of the notation we have just written? So, you have the set of information sets, you have the set of actions available at each information set, ok. So, this set of strategies then is a, is a set of functions like this. These functions will map each information set to an action, each information set is being mapped to an action and then such and you have the constraint that at each information set you have to take an action from those that are available right. So, you have to take an action for every information set. This is the set of set of strategies. Now, as I had ma mentioned the way the game proceeds is that you, you start from the starting point of the tree uh, that is in some players information set or player set he, he plays an action then someone else plays an action and so on. And then eventually the game when it reaches a leaf node the game ends ok. So, at the leaf node you have the realized payoffs for all the players. Now, if I tell you the strategies if I tell you an a profile of strategies gamma 1 to gamma n for my n players, does this define for you a path through the tree uh, starting from the root node to some leaf node? It does right because the first acting player takes some action whatever it is uh, the node comes to it is going to be some turn of some player to play his strategy that player's strategy will tell you what he is going to do in that information set wherever that node is then that guy uh, then the next guy will play or whatever right. So, every profile of strategies this defines a path from root um, root node to a leaf node or a terminal node. So, which means that it each profile of strategies defines for you a payoff for each player right. So, the payoff then is 
for player i from the n from the strategies of the n players is clear so this is there this defines for you a payoff so it's a so if i give you a profile of strategies which are functions from the information sets to actions that defines for me a payoff uh, for the players and then that define from that uh, profile of uh, that defines a payoff and once i have a payoff i can talk of a nash equilibrium okay so once again we are in it's it's the same situation as before you, players are picking their gammas which is their functions simultaneously okay it's a simultaneous choice of the functions and so we can define the nash equilibrium in the space of such functions so so gamma 1 star to gamma n star is a nash equilibrium if ji of gamma 1 star to gamma n star is less than equal to ji of gamma i comma gamma minus i star for all gamma i in capital gamma i that's it okay and you can see this this is basically our way of uh, we we essentially generalized the way we were looking for nash equilibrium by writing a normal form and so on this is what we were doing is effectively just this okay this is also generalizing the way we were looking for nash, nash equilibria of static games because static games are just a special case where each player has one information set 